Welcome to AQMD on the Air. I'm your host, Alan Caldwell. Joining me today is noted epidemiologist and University of California Irvine professor, Dr. Ralph Delfino. Dr. Delfino, thank you for joining me. Thank you. I understand that you conducted a study on elderly people with coronary heart disease living in the Los Angeles basin to assess the acute health effects of air pollution on the cardiovascular system. So what does your findings tell us? Uh, yes, we, um, we followed a, a group of uh, individuals with heart disease over time and measured air pollutants outside their retirement community. Um, so this was a very, very intensive study. The, the subjects actually participated, um, you know, in various different ways. And what we found was we found associations of uh, different outcomes related to cardiovascular disease um, to air pollutants outside their homes. Um, these outcomes included um, inflammation in the bloodstream, uh, in their circulation, uh, using various markers that have been linked to risk of uh, coronary artery disease. Uh, we also found increased blood pressure and evidence of cardiac ischemia using electrocardiographs. Um, the interesting findings uh, of our study include uh, the fact that we found uh, the most uh, significant or the strongest associations uh, were with particles that are very tiny, particles that are actually not regulated by EPA. We call these ultrafine particles. Um, to give you an idea, these are particles that are, you know, as small or smaller than, than a virus. So very small particles. Um, and, and we found that uh, these associations were stronger than the larger particles um, that, that make up the mass of say uh, fine particles, PM 2.5, if you ever heard of that, that's what the EPA uh, regulates. Um, and in addition um, to the ultrafine particles, we found that uh, certain chemical components uh, and certain markers in these particles were most strongly associated with the, the various uh, cardiovascular outcomes. Um, and these included chemicals linked to traffic. Uh, basically linked to emissions from uh, cars and trucks. Um, so we think, uh, we think from some of our other research and the research of other people that, um, that the explanation for these associations are that these chemical components coming out of, uh, you know, fresh emissions from, from vehicles um, are, are pro-oxidant. That is, they cause um, uh, oxidation of, of molecules, oxidation of, of things within cells um, that then leads to inflammation and, and lots of other problems that, uh, that have been linked to heart disease. In a recent publication of your work, participants also looked at the health effects of inflammation of the airways in the lungs. Now, how do these findings compare with the effects of pollutants on inflammation of the circulatory system? Yeah, so this was, um, we looked at uh, inflammation in the airways using a marker um, very similar to, to what's used to monitor asthma. Uh, very few of our subjects actually had asthma, so these were older, older people. Um, but we, we felt that this marker could show us whether there was inflammation in the airway. Recall that we looked at inflammation in the bloodstream as well. So we wanted to look, we wanted to look at the airways because it's thought that, you know, because you breathe in air pollution, uh, that causes inflammation in the airways and other effects that then spill over into the circulation. So we, we anticipated that we would find uh, effects in the airways from certain chemical components uh, that are also associated with inflammation in the bloodstream. Well, it was uh, interestingly enough, um, we found some very new things. And, and one of the things is not very surprising. We found that uh, pollutants that are uh, related to photochemistry You've heard of smog, so photochemical smog, right? Well, and everybody's heard of ozone. Ozone is a gas, but there are actually uh, photochemical pollutants in particles as well that cause smog, that cause that haze. Um, so we found that, that those chemicals and markers for those chemicals were most strongly associated with airway inflammation. Now, this isn't surprising because we know that ozone um, can induce um, airway disease can induce uh, asthma exacerbations. And so these, these photochemical oxidants and particles um, should be expected to do the same thing. Although I think this is one of the first studies in humans to actually to show that in a population. 
Um, so that was interesting. And, and uh, the, other thing that, the other thing that was fascinating was that you remember ultrafine particles. So the mass of those particles wasn't associated with the inflammation in the airways. But the chemicals that represent the photochemical oxidants were. Um, the other thing is that those, those oxidant chemicals weren't associated with inflammation in the bloodstream. Uh, so there, this linkage, this spillover from the airway to the bloodstream uh, wasn't really supported there. So it could be, this is what we think, it could be that different chemicals uh, cause oxidative stress and inflammation in the airways uh, more robustly, if you will, uh, compared with other chemicals that cause inflammation, oxidative stress and inflammation in the circulation and in systemically, you know, in distant parts of the body. Um, and, and we think that because some of the chemicals that were associated with um, inflammation in the bloodstream um, are chemicals that need to be activated. They need to be what we call biotransformed into chemicals that are pro-oxidant. Pro and a lot of these chemical transformations occur within the body, in the liver. Um, some of it occurs in the lungs, yes, but a lot of it occurs after these chemicals go from the lungs, seep into the circulation, and go elsewhere. So we know those chemicals travel into the bloodstream because they've been measured before. And so, and so that's what we think is going on. And so it's very important because, um, you know, as I said, EPA regulates the mass of particles, not the particular components. So how would you explain your findings of inflammation in the lungs and in circulation relative to particulate matter in air pollution? Yeah, so these, these chemical components um, oftentimes uh, comprise a very small and highly variable fraction of, of particle mass, like PM2.5 or PM10, that's this mass that's regulated by, by EPA in, in our ambient air. So because it's a very small and highly variable uh, part, if you just measure the mass, you're not going to necessarily capture how much of those chemicals are in that mass because a large part of that mass is actually biologically inactive. Uh, things that just really don't do that much harm. Or, or they do harm in a different way, but, but not, say, uh, you know, at distant sites beyond the lungs, for example, uh, to the heart. Um, so so we, um, uh, we think it's very important to measure the chemical components of particles and, and not just their mass. So Dr. Delfino, what do your findings say about regulating criteria pollutants such as PM10, PM2.5, and the ultrafine particles. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, well, again, I think uh, this, this harkens back to the question of, you know, what are we regulating? I mean, mass is not equal to mass is not equal to mass, right? Uh, the same mass on one day might be less toxic than the same mass on another day. Um, the same can be said that the same mass of particles near, near a busy highway, near a freeway where people live can be far more toxic than exactly the same mass, you know, in a suburban community, you know, far downwind from that freeway. So, you know, so when we regulate just mass, we're not really targeting the things that, that have toxic potential. Um, it, it, for instance, oxidative potential, as we've been talking about, things that, that can cause oxidative stress in the lungs and, and in the circulation and elsewhere. I also understand that you've conducted studies on children with asthma living in the Los Angeles Basin. Now, what did these studies reveal? Well, we've, we found that uh, various asthma outcomes uh, worsen in relation to air pollutant exposures. Um, these outcomes have included uh, symptoms, symptom exacerbations, uh, lung function, uh, use of medication, uh, as well as, again, airway inflammation using the same marker that we used in, in the elderly cohort. Um, the, the, the strongest finding, I think, that, that we've come across in terms of the type of air pollutant that's driving these asthma outcomes has been uh, markers of fossil fuel combustion products. So again, those sort of uh, pollutants that, that are emitted from cars and trucks, um, as well as some stationary sites. Uh, so these, these have really represented the strongest associations, and, um, and also in a study uh, funded by AQMD, we found that uh, risk of uh, recurrent visits to the hospital by children with asthma was associated with 
they're living uh, near busy traffic and being exposed to higher levels of traffic related air pollution. So, so in fact, these things can have um, clinical significance um, because certainly uh, an exacerbation of asthma that leads a child to go, have to go to the hospital um, is one of the most severe outcomes uh, with regard to asthma. So based on your studies as well as other studies, what can be done to decrease the effects of traffic related air pollution amongst children respiratory issues? Well, clearly I think we need to control the, the source of the air pollution. Um, and in this case, the source is, you know, cars and trucks that burn gasoline and diesel. Um, so, so I think that's, that's really the key, that's really the key here. And I, and I think the, the use of more fuel efficient cars, alternative energy sources, electric cars, and so on and so forth, is going to directly control the source. I mean, this is important because you simply can't move the people away from the source. Everybody can't live on the beach, you know, uh, upwind of all the freeways and highways. We can't afford that. You know, people, you can't move the pe people, you can't move the children um, who have to live in neighborhoods with, with lots of traffic, uh, you know, in the middle of L.A. or, or, or elsewhere. Um, you know, uh, one of the things we can do in that regard is to not build schools uh, near, near freeways and, and busy highways. But aside from that, I think it's important to control um, the sources, to, to control our use and our dependence on, on fossil fuels. Uh, and clearly, uh, getting away from fossil fuels has other benefits, um, economic benefits, uh, other environmental benefits. Uh, decreasing the impact on climate change, for example. So, so really the bottom line is this is not a political, just a political issue. Uh, this is a medical issue as well. Before we close, can you give me an idea of what you would like to see regarding this type of research in the future? Yes, I, uh, I would like to, to continue looking at these different particle components, um, particularly the, the types of organic aerosols we talked about that vary in, in proportion uh, as a proportion of, of say, PM 2.5 mass. Um, I would like to, as I said, I, I, we found associations between um, asthma outcomes and products of fossil fuel combustion. I'd also look, like to look at these uh, photochemically related aerosols um, that, that we would anticipate would have a major impact um, on, on asthma as well. Because, like I said, they, they're pro-oxidant, like ozone. Um, they, people can be exposed um, far from, from traffic sources because, you know, once these, once these chemicals are emitted into the environment, they then undergo transformations and you can live far da downwind in places like Riverside or, or, or San Bernardino and whether you're near a busy freeway or not, you're still breathing in that, that smog. Um, so, so I'd like to actually do more research on that and kind of compare the effects of these different components. On, on different target sites, from the lungs uh, to peripheral organs, like, like the uh, circulation, the heart, uh, and, and elsewhere. Dr. Delfino, I want to thank you for joining me, and thank you for your research and helping us understand how air pollution affects our health. Thank you very much. And that's our show. Thank you for watching AQMD on the air and for helping us clean the air that we breathe. Let's work together. Let's work together.